she spoke and from the ignorant nether plain so in contrast to that now we shout and cry and dispel the light which comes she spoke and from the ignorant nether plain a cry a warped echo naked and shuddering came now this is again as you are saying she is ascending in the inner world into the subliminal at the highest below in the inner world the subconscious down below there are again powers of the vital and they will rise they will challenge the entry of any superior power in that world is seen therefore this cry of the warped echo this is an echo because she is being so these people are hearing and seeing. a voice of the sense shaker human mind sense shaker locked by senses sense vital here in the sense of vital so we are, our mind is governed by the vital instincts vital prejudices vital desires wants jealousies everything like that thing it is locked in fact that is what we normally do we know that by mind we should do this we should do this we should do this but in practice we don't do that because our vital comes and intervenes it starts arguing and then it dissuades away from other things it happens constantly a voice of a sensical human mind carried its proud complaint of god like power hedged by the limits of a mortal storm bound the chains of earthly ignorance so sensical human mind he is chained now chained well prometheus we have seen how you are chained rock tied to the rock and all that you see so it is that mind now in the whole description is kind of presentation of prometheus imprisoned in his body and his brain the mortal cannot see god's mighty whole or share his vast and deep identity who stands unguessed within our ignorant hearts and knows all things because he is one with all man only sees the cosmic surfaces cosmic surface that is what we see cosmic surfaces in the good old days almost some 80 90 years ago there was a very popular book by one of the most famous physicist sir james jeans i don't know if you heard of him now sir james jeans and the title of his book is this the mysterious world he is talking about the astronomy and all the planets and all these objects in the sky and all that thing about the mysterious world the mysterious universe when this book was this book came up in the course of their colloquies shivendu and his disciples in the evening after the accident in 1940 41 shivendu made a remark that but after all sir james jean is scratching on the surface of the soil surface of the earth he is not able to penetrate below the surface of the cosmic surfaces all that thing what is there behind he has no idea of that thing in fact he used a very peculiar example see you have got a heap of garbage in the villages particularly in india heap of garbage and then the hen will go and scratch something here and something there some food or some insect or something to eat scratching on that garbage it is that kind of an example which is there what mind is doing to the cosmic richnesses which are in front of him he is not able to understand that cosmic 
man only see the cosmic surface then wondering what may lie hid from the sun a little way he delves to depths below so all the findings of science are actually just going maybe a couple of millimeters below the surface <laughs> not more than that not more than a few millimeters below the surface see you must be aware of the most popular theory of this creation universe astronomy i mean the big bang theory how from a singularity the whole cosmos came into existence and how the expanding 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 and it happened roughly 14 billion years ago the expansion is going on you see so that is supposed to be most successful theory of the universe the origin of the universe starting from the singularity singularity about which you cannot speak anything it burst and then it grows what happens after that you can describe but what happened in the singularity nobody knows about that nobody can know about that now recently a couple of weeks ago another very successful theory has come we says that there is nothing like a big bang there was nothing like a big bang you use some other kind of mathematical equation in which the singularity does not appear at all and the theory says the universe had been always there universe is there universe will be there that is the latest theory of the cosmology so you can see how even the idea within within 50 years the whole idea has changed now a scientist calls it progress you had a very successful idea you have gone from one idea to the other idea it is progress but in reality what are we doing we are scratching on the surface of things we are not really able to penetrate and see what was there behind all those things at all you see that that knowledge is not there at all you see, you see big bang in other words we have not really understood what is matter what is space what is time what is the relationship with each other what is the relationship with each other if i have got a few objects like that and arrange in this manner i get a certain property those very objects if i put in a different manner this is the here if i put here and this here the objects are remain the same but their arrangements have changed that rearrangement has caused has given rise to another property in other words how has space entered into the development of a property of that we have no knowledge we have no understanding at all this is only space and matter now imagine the dynamics of it this goes on here this goes on here like that in the process of time again how the properties alter of that we have no idea at all now obviously these are difficult questions they can be posed but for them there are no scientific methods available for investigation how space determines the properties of a material arrangement of that science cannot say anything at all now the defense of science of the physicists is look we are trying to do trying to understand what we can we are not going to tackle those questions which are beyond our possibilities of instrumentation of discovery of analysis it is futile maybe it is good for philosophers to talk about them but for the purposes of science well this is what we are we are here at this point and this is what we can do which is fair enough that is perfectly logical also in fact i i will appreciate that kind of stand this is what we can do and this is what we have achieved 
the cells are there, the bodies are there, this happens, that happens, you use uh, this microscope, that microscope, this telescope, put table, all those things are there, fine. And this is what we can do. And from these observations, this is what we conclude. So up to that extent, if science remains restricted to that limitation, to that understanding, to that formulation, it is its merit. It's a good thing. But when it tries to go beyond that, outside its domain, then you are causing havoc. You are no more a scientist. When Stephen Hawking, he is one of the most famous cosmologist, mathematician, Stephen Hawking, when he says, what place for God in this creation? My theory is there, it describes everything beautifully, it goes like this, it happens like this, etc. I don't need God to come here and tell me what is going to happen here. Now, that kind of a statement is a non-scientific statement, which, strictly speaking, a scientist should not make. He says, this is what I can do, I will do, I present this. That's all. Beyond that, what happened here is not my concern. Sorry, I cannot tell you at all, you see. I am limited, this is my domain. Which is perfectly all right. But the moment he starts saying, what place for God, he is going out of his realm of knowledge. But after he believes in knowledge, after he believes in knowledge, citizen, 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 citizen. His book is popular, it has been published in 20 languages, it has sold in millions of copies. <laughs> in which years? Uh, that was about, about, uh, about almost 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. But now, now maybe, but the, it, means that, it means that nobody will believe him. No, it means that nobody will believe, nobody will believe his theories. <laughs> See, the point is, in fact, that way, let me tell you, you know, what you are saying is uh, very valid. Whether he believes or not, as a scientist, it doesn't concern me. Today he believes, tomorrow he does not believe. It doesn't matter, it doesn't concern me at all. In what way should it concern us? In that sense, I would say Newton was more coherent in his logic. He wrote 17 volumes of philosophy as theologians. Out of that, only two are devoted to physics. Out of those 71. The rest is all religion, philosophy, theology, and things like that, you see. But when he came to physics, he did not bring God or anybody else there. He has made a certain framework. He is remaining strictly in that framework. And seeing the completeness, the logical conclusions which can be derived from those formulations. He does not go beyond that at all. So that way, he had that kind of a development, which told him, look, this is what you are doing, remains strictly in that. In the 19, in 17th century, at the time of Newton, the, these two books, when they came out, physics book, Optics and Mechanics, Principles of math, math, Mathematical Physica and Optics, when these books came out in uh, 1687, I think, about that time, <coughs> he would have faced greatly the fate of Galileo. Because there is no God there. And the theologians, the Christian atmosphere was so strong in those days that he would have faced the fate of Galileo at that time, Newton. In a way, therefore, to cue those people aside, he wrote others 15 volumes for the theologist. <laughs> so he was a very practical man in that sense, very shrewd also you can say in that sense. See, there is, there is a very famous 
situation in physics. He gives a certain law, what is called the law of gravity, that there is a force of attraction between two objects which is proportional to the mass of each object and inversely proportional to the this square of the distance separating them. This object is here, this object is here. If you take it away further, the force becomes, it becomes still weaker, it becomes still weaker. If you reduce this one, the force becomes weaker. So that is the law he has given, the law of gravity. And the entire Newtonian physics of universe is based on that, which got changed in 1915 by Einstein, which is a different story. But when people in that year, 1667, they started arguing with Newton. The sun is there, earth is there. The force of attraction between the sun and the earth is proportional to the mass of the sun and mass of the earth. And inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the sun and the moon, sun, sun and the earth. Now, people started arguing with him, look, earth, sun is here, earth is here. How does this object act where it is not? The sun is here and the, uh, the earth is here. How does earth act or the sun act on the earth when they are separated from each other? By what agency, by what mechanism? How the earth, what is called the action at distance. How the action at a distance takes place? And Newton says, I am sorry, I have no answer for that. For my purposes, for the purposes of physics, it is sufficient to give this law. And on that basis, I can work out all my physics. How the earth acts on the sun and vice versa, I am not in a position to tell you. So people argued very severely in those days. And Newton's defense was, I frame no hypothesis about the hypothesis non fingo I frame no hypothesis about this one. For my purposes, this is a practical view, it works, let me proceed. Now, obviously, the law of gravity as a mathematical formulation has worked even today also in spite of Einstein's theory of relativity. All your rockets, the satellites which you are sending, all that, they are entirely based on Newton's physics. They are working precisely. You send a rocket, it goes, lands on the moon, etc, etc. It does all that is required exactly on the basis of Newton's laws. It works. It does not work on the cosmic dimension, it's a different story. But Newton at that time was not looking for them also. See. So, uh, there, there are quite deeper things of that kind. So, in other words, most of these theories are provisional theories. All these theories are provisional theories. And we can even say that, in fact, there is a German philosopher, Popper. He speaks of a scientific theory is a good theory. That scientific theory is a good theory which is falsifiable, which can be proved wrong. A theory which can be proved wrong, that is the best theory. <laughs> Falsifiable. In other words, the theory must give certain propositions. Look, this is my theory, and if I work out, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. If this will happen, it means that I can go back to the laboratory and test it, whether it is happening or not. If it is not happening, then the theory is bad. Theory is collapsed. So he says that that theory is good, which will lead to consequences that will prove and reflect back on the theory and saying that, sorry, this is not good. In other words, you make the progress now from one theory to the other theory. Like that, you see. Falsifiable. So whole, whole scientific knowledge in that sense is provisional. 
is provision is a mental knowledge provisional knowledge. then wondering what may lie hid from the sun a little way he deceive he delves to depth that is why he says a little way all that we are doing although we are saying the cosmos 13 billion years ago and all that kind of a thing still it is a little thing he delves to depths below but soon he stops he cannot reach life's core or commune with throbbing heart or thing he cannot reach life's core really is true i mean we know it very well but we are keeping ourselves purposely silent if life has come out of the arrangement of matter then why does life die what is the cause of death of life that we don't know we are no see water remains water indefinitely it is not change but life dies <laughs> what is the cause of that we don't know at all cannot reach life score life score means already in matter there is the presence of death somewhere yes. that, yes. We that we don't know exactly that we don't know that we don't in the words by the very manner in which the present matter is built life either coming out of that matter or entering into that matter is bound to suffer the consequences of death you cannot the problem boils down therefore for deathless life to be the problem is to tackle at the material level body cells this is what we have seen just now bear the body in men descent no 